The following video was recorded on location in my state-of-the-art office in the corner of my first floor apartment. If you like what you're about to hear, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell in the upper right corner. Hello, Josh. <laughs> Bored from Leprous Air. Hi, how's it going? Uh, it's uh, it's pretty good. What about you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to do this interview. No problem. That's an honor. That drummer guy. That's totally awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, yeah, I mean, um, once the opportunity came around to be able to talk to anyone from Leprous to be able to talk about the brand new album coming out August 25th, I really wanted to make sure I was able to talk to you because, like, the more that I've gotten to listen to the new album, I think it's some of the finest drumming that you've been that you've done the day. It. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that's great to hear. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. You know, every time when I do an album, especially for Leprous, that I'm my own man, I go totally all in for it. So, uh, and it can be tough times, you know. Uh, sometimes you just don't uh, make, uh, yeah, you just don't are able to do what you want to do or uh, express yourself musically in such a good way as you wish to do. And then you just push yourself to the limits constantly. And yeah, uh, so it's a blood, sweat and tears in the studio every time when I'm recording a new Leprous album. <laughs> and with that, what was it like to be able to record your second album with Leprous in the studio? Uh, yeah, it was I, I felt more prepared for the whole task to kind of... Um, to, uh, what's the English word for uh, just kind of doing as good as you can uh, your uh, my uh, what's it called my ability to just do the best I can do uh, I can I kind of felt more prepared uh, for what what was going to happen because you you play in the studio re you record you have to be prepared for for your ideas you need to have a plan for what to do of course you can improvise something but you you have to be uh, you have to have a plan and it was easier to it was e easier to uh, it was easier to uh, uh, do a good uh, yeah to, yeah it was just uh, I would say it was because I already did the first album two years ago uh, I kind of learned a lot of stuff during the process that I took with me the next two years which is yeah last year that we recorded Malina so uh, so yeah the second album was uh, was in some way easier but some way way harder because my expectations to myself were much higher because okay I've already done it I've already recorded an album for Leprous uh, which is my own band and now I'm gonna take it to new heights and I'm gonna kill myself if I don't make it <laughs> so um, so it, it's yeah it's some way easier and some way way harder because I, I I set the limits way higher maybe higher than I should have done so uh, but okay it sounded very ambitious but it was a very ambitious album as well <laughs> Yeah, I gotta say without question, I mean, that, that's why I started off right away saying this is some of your finest drumming to date, because it definitely sounds like you push yourself to your absolute limits here. I mean, whether it's something that's a little more simple, like From the Flame, you know, uh, you know, yeah. a really good choice for a single, or something towards the end of the album like Coma, which is some of the most insane drumming I've heard in quite some time. I mean, you oh, definitely cool. got all the, you got everything covered on this album, and it's so cool to hear. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's very cool that you, you, you say From the Flame as one of the easiest uh, and more straight songs, because it actually is, but the fact is, that's the song I used definitely most time to practice on, From the Flame, because I, uh, that I was just to figure out a part, especially on the verses what to do on the verses uh, to not make it sound too proggy with all that different time signatures and everything so so finding a groove on the verses on from the flame was definitely what I used uh, most time on, on the whole album <laughs> yeah, I guess he, I guess he didn't see that coming <laughs> <laughs> you know that actually does make a lot of sense because when you do a lot of technical music when you do focus on something that has a lot more grooves rather than just technicality i mean there's so many different options that you can go about things yeah um yeah uh, and and you know when it's sometimes when it's simple stuff it's the small nuances that really matters and that's 
so much time on From the Flame compared to some of the other songs. <laughs> like uh, like the the chorus on Captive is also pretty pretty difficult. That was something I just learned in the studio. That was I and I said, hey, try to do this. And okay, I can try to do it, but he doesn't know how to play drums, so I have to figure out how to do how to do it. But uh, uh, so so yeah, all, all those processes are are all, all always hard to hard to hard to tell before exactly what's going to happen, you know. Yeah, and, and that's the great thing about being in a progressive band is when you realize that there is no limits for what you can make in the studio, and it's just coming from the ability of the musicians to make the music. So when you do have those challenging moments where you really push yourself for what you want to do, especially drumming-wise, I mean, you end up with a result that you never could have imagined you were able to pull off. Yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes, and when that happens, I'm pretty happy because I've, I've never been uh, comfortable with myself in the studio actually uh, until recently I'm, I'm way more a live drummer I'm more in my zone where I'm doing stuff live and more spontaneous maybe uh, studio wise and getting the perfect sounds and stuff like that I, I, I felt for a long time that I was that I was pretty far behind that what I what I should have been uh, you, you know the previous drummer for Leprous that did Cole as the last album he was First of all, an awesome drummer, one of my main influences these days, actually. And uh, he was also so into sounds, and he knew exactly where he wanted to go when he went into the studio. And that was, I kind of pushed myself uh, to be able to uh, to uh, to not come in and fail. <laughs> So with, with that said, uh, I haven't had the opportunity to be able to see you play live yet with Leprous. Uh, do, do you change much of the drum parts live or do you try to stick close to what is on the recorded material? Yeah, both actually. Uh, I, I, I think it's dangerous to just stick to what ended up in the studio versions constantly because uh, live is different than, than studio. Sometimes maybe something would sound way better live if you just do a little bit more of that and that instead of staying constantly to the arrangements that you made in the studio. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, the signature grooves and the signature parts is definitely important for the song so I, I don't want to mess too much with that but uh, a lot of fills and stuff um, sounds definitely best when they are improvised and lots of the fills uh, in uh, the studio is improvised and it's happening in the moment and that's when it sounds best in my opinion so it's important to still try to have that natural uh, feeling to the whole song and uh, and the mood of the song when you also play live even though you have heard the final studio version a hundred times and you know exactly what feel you did on that section that section I think it's important to just feel free. Uh, like Gavin Harrison says for Porcupine Tree, it's, um, he just has to do it, otherwise he, he, he won't survive on stage if he is not able to improvise. It, it's not to be ed egoistic or anything like that, or, or what you call uh, self... Uh, yeah, it's not only for your own purposes, it's actually for the listener's purpose also, to, to get that magic vibe that happens sometimes in the studio, only on that take. You, you need to create, uh, try to recreate in a new way some of the emotions and, and feeling to a song. Uh, yeah, difficult to explain. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, you, you gotta check us out live when we come to the US sometime. We don't know when yet, but yeah, sometime. Oh yeah, I was going to be asking about that later because uh, I was definitely hoping that you'd be coming back to uh, the US to be able to promote the brand new album because I definitely would love to be able to hear these sounds live. But just to get back in what you were talking about with like the fills and everything and being able to uh, carry that kind of improvisation, that's exactly what I do when I play as well. It's like I make sure that I keep uh, the grooves in the main parts like uh, as, as close as possible so it's not turning into a completely different song. But when it comes to fills or different moments like that, it's very inspiring for a drummer to be able to to be able to do that kind of improv to make the live show feel more live and real rather than just feeling like that they're yeah. hearing the album yeah and um yeah i completely agree and uh that's why i'm also pretty happy that i play drums in a band like this and not guitar because on guitar you very often has to stick to the riff constantly you know and especially if you are two guitarists in the band as we are so uh 
but the drums and bass are oh, sorry oh, and the drums and bass are um, more free to improvise on that kind of stuff so um, that's cool oh yeah yeah and speaking of that what kind of setup did you use in the studio this time around um I kind of changed a little bit, but my main setup is five toms, three racks and two floor toms. This time I used clear heads on the rack toms and coated heads on the floors because I, on the last album, I did coated on everything. But this time I wanted a little bit more attack and punch and like, uh, yeah, so sometimes I, I, I feel like uh, it, it's, yeah, I, I just wanted to, to try it and to get more a little smack on your face when I, I play the rack toms and it was also based on that we did some A and B testers on on different heads and stuff and then we figured out that the coated heads on the floor toms um, uh, gave gave way more uh, warmness and dynamic um, and dynamic uh, feeling to it but for, for the rack toms it, it felt way better to have them clear except the title track Malina the, uh, there we used uh, coated on all tops but I I wish I could have used clear heads on the uh, when I'm listening to it now I still wish I should just stick with the clear heads because I, it's hard to explain but I think the sound can be a little too small sometimes a little strange on the small tops when you use coated heads depends on the drums and stuff like that but um I also switched around and used one of the floor toms on the left side of the Hyatt on some, on some songs. For instance, the bonus track, Roots, I don't know if you, you heard it, that's the bonus Oops. track. Uh, then I used the left floor tom a lot. And also uh, on Mirage, the Mirage uh, song, uh, in the verse, I'm, I'm incorporating the floor tom instead of using a double kick pattern I'm kind of switching it with a tom and then I have it on the left side because it's it was way easier uh, physically <laughs> so uh, and it kind of opened up on other parts and stuff so um, yeah and, and some songs I remove I remove the um, or left floor tom and use a snare instead an extra snare for instance on coma as you said then i have a snare low pitched on the left side so and switching a lot between different snares on the whole album i don't know if you recognize but some snares are very very low tuned and some are more high pitched and smacky oh yeah that's definitely Mm. one thing that i've i've noticed with your playing since you join Leprous. I mean, with the congregation, I mean, the the toms alone just have a very distinct sound on that album. Mm. And it's it's really cool to know that it was like, it was all with like the, t- with the uh, coated tom heads and uh, getting that yeah. very warm feel to it. But with this album, being able to switch things around, being able to go from clear to coated, being able to switch your setup around, uh, moving the moving one of the floor toms to the left side, or sometimes replacing mm. it with a snare. I mean, it's good to see that kind of creativity going on. Yeah, and I think it's very important because, uh, I don't know, I, I've never had my ultimate setup on, on a drum kit. I, I've never had that. I'm constantly changing. And, and I don't say it's a good thing uh, necessarily, but uh, I, I think it's important to just stay creative and get new ideas because when you, when you sit down, and I guess this goes out for all drummers, when you sit down behind a kit with only one kick drum and two toms and a snare and a hi-hat, uh, that's of course totally different from going from a Terribosio setup but uh, I guess in some ways you, you get way better ideas on a smaller setup because you need to be I don't know more creative with the few stuff that you have uh, but, but I've always been a fan of playing with big setups and I'm sure that the drumming would not be in as cool as they are now if I were not allowed to use as many toms for instance as I wanted to do but I try to have as less as possible but and then just build it around when I feel that I need an extra floor tom or I need more toms to play melodies yeah I, I put them up but I'm constantly changing my setup a little bit and also uh, yeah as you said when I'm when I move around on my floor tom it's it's because I, yeah, it was just when I rehearsed and practiced, I, I felt that ah, maybe I can do that kind of groove. Oh no, it won't work when I have it, have the floor tom on the right side. Okay, let's move it to the left side. You know, why not? There's no rules. If, if if I had to move it uh, twenty meters away from me <laughs> to make it work, then okay, yeah, do it. If you get my point. So, uh, so yeah, 
trying to be as free as possible, no rules um, to, to the setup. But uh, but of course, if I had been way more used to play on the same setup all the time, maybe I would have even better feels and more controlled controlled feeling to stuff. But you know, it's it's always positive and negative sides of of a setup. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one thing that um really comes through especially uh in a live setting is when you're in the studio you are able to try to uh, put together your perfect setup as long as you got the right equipment to be able to pull that off but when when you're touring you do have to make sure that you do have the equipment that you do need live and sometimes you're not always able to have that extra floor tom to the side or the extra snare yeah. to be able to get mic'd up have, have you thought about uh what you're going to be doing for the next uh touring cycle with that very very good question actually because i'm struggling a little bit with how to do that live as Especially because uh, am I gonna switch different main snare drums during a show? Probably not the easiest thing to do. But if you listen to the album, the deepest snare compared to the high, most high pitched snare on the album is pretty big, and it's so important for a song. So maybe I will have to switch between, let's say, two snares, main, main snares. And when it comes to the left tom thing, I'm pretty uh, lucky that the main song with the left. Uh, floor drum group didn't happen to be on the album it's only on the bonus track uh, so uh, so I think I will figure out how to play those patterns on the rest of the songs that I use the uh, left floor drum I think I will just stick to it and do it on the right tone uh, because it's not that much you know but you know uh, I hate compromises so if I felt like I had to do it that way as I say switch around and do it like that then I would just have to do it and and luckily I, I will have a drum tech for the first time on this tour so uh, he just need he, he is happy to get some more work I guess <laughs> but um, on coma for instance it's such important to have the extra snare on the left side so that's gonna be a priority to have a deep fat snare on the left side uh, that is uh, that, that has a nice contrast to the main snare so uh yeah i hope i will be getting there somehow <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome and yeah i mean it's so great that you are finally able to get a drum tech when it comes to leprous i mean when you finally get to that point where you don't always have to worry about your setup and setting everything up and you are able just to focus on the show that is such a great feeling yeah, yeah, yeah. that is uh yeah, definitely definitely a great feeling because uh, tour life can be pretty hard when you have concerts every day for five weeks and you have to set up set down everything uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to just focus on and focus on um, on the playing yeah oh sure and i'm glad to see that coma might be uh, getting played live as well because that's a song that i keep going back to and it's always the most intriguing to me not just because of, of how insane your playing is but it's just i really love everything that's going on in the song and i'm glad to see that's uh, getting some rehearsal and uh, might end up live yeah um yeah, that's a very relevant question you have because we have discussed it in Lepers that, okay, this song is going to be terrible to learn. Not uh, not necessarily the drums because I've already played it in the studio, so it should be possible to, to play it live. Uh, I'm already planning to do a live playthrough of it, but to make that song sound good live with the guitars and bass and everything and those crazy rhythms, that's um, that can be tricky. So we got to see if it's worth to use so much time on nailing that song compared to the other songs um, to make it happen. But we have scheduled it to be, uh, be worked with on rehearsals. So I hope we will nail it. But it's a, it's a very tricky song, yeah, indeed. And again, I don't really like compromises. So if people want to hear that song live, they should definitely get it, even though it's a pain in the ass to learn. <laughs> oh, sure. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I can definitely tell from a fan perspective. I mean, there's so much going on in there. I mean, if you guys are able to find a way to be able to make that work in a live setting, I'd be very happy to hear that. But if it does not end up happening that way, I completely understand. <laughs> you, will, you will anyways get it on a playthrough video. Worst case scenario. <laughs> very cool. So in, in, in speaking of that, of course, there are three Leprous albums before you were able to join the band. What are some of the songs from the first three albums that you enjoy playing live the most? Oh, uh, they are 
they are pretty different uh, some of the songs uh, sometimes I can get a very big kick of playing forced entry for, in- for instance from bilateral forced entry is a very cool uh, and energetic and technical song but I also really enjoy to play echo live from Cole um, yeah and that's about it echo and, and the valleys I also like uh, the valley I've been playing like a hundred times live so maybe I would say echo right now probably because I haven't played that so much but it kind of it's very dynamic it's it's very dynamic and it opens up to to put some different touch on on your playing and uh, that you don't see so much in other songs in the set oh very cool yeah i mean there's i mean again that's the great thing about lepers is that there is so many different styles so many different dynamics and every album and every song uh, let alone there's so many different ideas that are going through there that you know especially someone with a creative mind being able to join lepers like yourself and being able to approach uh, the drumming in so many different ways i mean it's got to be really inspiring that way uh yeah yeah definitely because you know the previous drummer of lepers he wasn't just uh, a random drummer he uh, yeah he's pretty good so it was big shoes to fill and and i had to find a way to fit into lepers and play the older songs without ending up being uh, like 70 percent good copy of him i needed to find my own touch in his playing and in the music to make it work and to make it kind of um, uh, to make it uh, sound uh, oh, I'm going, going to use Google Translate real quick here to find the right word uh, uh, but uh, yeah just just to not make it sound like a bad copy you know because he, he was so good uh, so um, okay here we go oh, it, it is, uh, convincing yes. convincing to convince live yeah so I have a kind of convincing uh, have a con- convincing style and uh, attitude on stage uh, that, that doesn't mess too much up with the song but uh, but still still is me board called stuff on stage you can hear him you know so mm. Oh, definitely. So, uh, of course, um, outside of Leprous, uh, you also have been a part of some amazing bands in your career. And uh, one of my favorites that you've been a part of is uh, Borknagar, which uh, uh, the album from last year, Winter Thrice, was easily one of my favorite albums of 2016. Is there anything currently going on with uh, Borknagar right now, or are you just focused on Leprous right now? Um, because Leprous is... Um... No, no secret. Lepers is um, way more my kind of music. Uh, uh, Bortegar is nice friends of mine that I was lucky to join as a very young dude. So, um, so uh, but yeah, it's definitely stuff going on. It's, it, it's gonna be another album with Bortegar. It is so. Einstein, the main composer in Bortegar, he's still writing for a new, new album. Oh, very cool. Yeah, and you know, it's it's great to see that you are able to be able to transition into so many different styles as well. I mean, with Leprous already having so many different styles a part of it, but when you are able to get into these other bands and play these other styles, I mean, it's really cool to be able to show off everything that you're capable of. Yeah, thank you. It's, um, you know, I, I always wish to be a musician and a full-time drummer. That was my main goal since I was 14 years old, uh, so... Uh, that I already knew that yeah you have to nail doing different stuff but maybe you can maybe I can try to somehow have my own touch to it anyway um, but uh, yeah so it, it's cool to play in different bands but I hope that for the future I can specialize even more on on uh, less stuff like focus 100% on two or three bands instead of nine bands <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the thing with being a drummer is that uh, there's not as many people in the world who want to play drums as compared to wanting to sing or play guitar or whatever that is. So when you end up being a really good drummer and getting well known, everyone wants to play with you and you get so many opportunities. Yeah, um, it's also a lot of drummers, especially in Norway. It's, you know, well, so many drummers, they study, they take master degrees in drumming, and they are great drummers and everything, but as, yeah, it's it's not enough jobs, you know, it's not, not, not enough bands or artists that actually need drummers. So, uh, so it ends up like 
some of the best players they they don't have have work you know and and that's i guess it's how it works all over the world uh with with musicians it, it's tough you need to be an entrepreneur as well um somehow and uh, um but yeah it's an honor that so many bands want to hire me and i've also been lucky to do some session work this year i for instance there's a norwegian prog death metal band called in vain that i play on the new album for um <laughs> It's gonna sound pretty good. It's gonna be released in September, I think. They also have the Trivium singer uh, on one of the songs, um, Matthew. So um, yeah, you you gotta just make. For me, it's important to always work on my own style and try to be some way unique in my touch and to prove that you cannot program pro program. You cannot program drums for this album, even though it's as tight as you get it. Uh, uh, or you can program it, but it won't be as good as if you hire board. That's my goal. You know, I need to find a way to be able to do lots of stuff that a computer is not able to do. Because there's no secret that almost all kinds of music today is programmed. Uh, not, not for bands, though, yet. Rock bands, metal bands. But, but um, uh, yeah, it's a lot of sound replacement and uh, editing, you know. And I don't like that. I, I want things to be natural. And hopefully you get that impression on Malina, that it's pretty natural drum sound. Oh, yeah. I mean, I definitely got that from... Uh, the previous two Leprous albums, I mean, The Congregation and with Molina, I mean, it can definitely hear that it's a real drummer playing real parts, and that's what makes the most technical aspects of the album that much more insane to listen to because it is an actual human playing those parts rather than having everything be replaced in Pro Tools or just having, like, a drum kit from Hell doing everything. I mean, it's you actually playing, and that is so refreshing to hear. Uh, thank you very much. That was definitely my goal all the way, and uh, also the band's that it's gonna sound natural but even though it's organic and natural it doesn't mean that it cannot sound huge and heavy and yeah so uh, kind of trying to find that kind of perfect balance that it's natural dynamic and nice but still cuts through in the mix when you need it to be heavy because you, there's no doubt that when you when you add five or six guitar tracks you add synths you add vocals you add vocal harmonies you add bass then it's sometimes hard especially in heavy metal music to get the drums sounding heavy and big without use samples and pro tools tricks as you say uh, so but this time we can proudly say that we haven't used any samples at all it's, it's pretty normal to mix as well to have natural sound and some sample and mix it but this time we said to the mixing engineer that you're not allowed <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, that, and to me, just as a fan perspective, it's so refreshing to hear that because I, I am such a huge fan of uh, musicians being able to play the music that they record, whether it's in the studio or in a live setting, being able to replicate the parts that they do live without the need for electronic elements to replace what you're doing. So the fact that that was a main focus on this album is so great to hear. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for that, and uh, that, that doesn't only go for the drums necessarily, also for the string parts, like the cello, the real cello, uh, and, and keyboards. It's it's Leslie, it's uh, it's not a Nord stage uh, with a Hammond sample, it's a real Leslie and Hammond origin, and a Fender Rhodes, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. But you know, it, it takes time to do it on the old school way or on the real way, as I like to call it. <laughs> it takes time, but it's those small nuances that turns out in the end to be very important. And it ends up making you a better musician as well, whether, rather than having to rely on technology to fill in all the blanks that you aren't capable of doing when you are able to do everything 100% from your own hands and when you're a drummer, hands and feet, when you are able to do all of that, it, it just makes you a better musician. Yeah, uh, you could say that, but for, for us, it's from the sound point of view, it's, uh, it's from the sound point of view that we really like to do it the way we do. Um, and um, yeah, and what to say? Um, it's a lot of very good electronic music as well going out on out there, uh, and and that definitely needs to be have that electronic edge sure. to it. But um, um, but but for us in Leprous and in this case, it was 
important that it sounded natural and organic. And and we often make fun of when we hear bass drums that sounds like machine guns, <laughs> uh, like when when it's supposed to sound boom 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 boom. Because a kick drum should have sub and a kick drum should have bass. We we don't like the click, you know. So. Yeah, again, the the sound we produce when we record is the sound we want in the mix as well. Yeah. And, from Alina. Oh, yeah. And I can definitely, again, say from the fan perspective, I mean, I just love everything that's going on with Molina, which, of course, is coming out August 25th through Inside Out Music. It's, it's great to see that you're still part of the band, being able to really show off that creativity that you can pull off and doing some of the best songwriting that Leprous has done to date. And I think when people get the so chance much. to be able to check this out, I think they're really going to see that Leprous is at the top of their game right now. Yeah, that's very nice to hear. It's, uh, it's our goal as well to make the best album we've ever done. 